Hello, hello everybody, this is Tiptop MTG here today with another MTG Arena video. In today's video, I'm going to be playing some Brawl on MTG Arena in celebration of my Strixhaven Brawl Week. For those of you who don't know, a week or two after a set comes out, I do something called Brawl Week, where every day of the week, I play a different Brawl deck to kind of celebrate the launch and get to see all the different legendaries in the set. Like I said, we are playing a Hofri Ghostforge deck. He's a 5 cost, red and white, legendary creature, dwarf cleric, a 4-5, and he ha says, spirits you control get plus 1 plus 1 and have trample and haste. And then he says, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types, and has, when this creature leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to your graveyard. Alright, so, uh, pretty interesting, it's it's not something Boros typically does, but we have a lot of effects that care about your graveyard, things that can get things into graveyards, things with awesome ETBs that we can maybe do multiple times, and ways to kind of deal, or to kind of take our creatures and kind of throw them at our opponent, uh, with things like Kazul's Fury. So this deck is definitely an interesting one, and we're gonna have to see how it kind of plays out, but it's a mix between your typical Boros deck and one that's a little bit more graveyard centric um and so we're gonna see how this goes but we have lots of awesome effects and i'm really excited uh to kind of jump into this all right so let's jump right into this so we are really looking for a an opponent that isn't necessarily too fast we do need to get a little bit of setup so going against you know a mono red deck probably won't be great for us but if we can go up against something that's a little bit more mid-rangey i think it will be pretty good um brawl matchmaking has been kind of weird uh today was supposed to be cody but i just can't get into a game with cody like i will literally it just will say waiting for server forever. Uh, so that's kind of infuriating. So we're doing hoe free today, which is a little out of order, but whatever. Let's uh, look at this hand. I really don't like this hand, you know, uh, but I, I really like lower hold excavation. And we do have a little bit of removal. So I could see keeping this, but I think mulliganing is probably the smart move. Um, this hand does not look amazing, but I am going to keep it. I'm just going to use Valakut Awakening tapped. Uh, it looks like we are going up against an elf deck here. We're going to Alpine Meadow first, just so we have access to both colors next turn, in case we do get a one drop or an untapped land. Um, I'm not too worried about either of these necessarily, and we do draw into some removal. We just really need to draw into a second land, which shouldn't be necessarily too hard with Thrill of Possibility. But we'll see. Uh, also, Charming Prince is another option we could do, and it's probably one I will do to help prevent us from being kind of murdered by uh, these elves. It'll help just a little bit. Um, he will be able to get down his commander if he wants, and it looks like he will. Um, probably creating a 1-1, but he could potentially put a counter on the blade guy. Yeah, no. I, yeah, the 1-1 was probably the better move there. Um, if we don't draw a land, I might honestly just concede, because they do have a pretty good start and it is brawl where in a format where it really doesn't matter but yeah we will thrill the possibility discarding the okay no no we're good uh exile up to one target non-land non token permanent i could get rid of his commander i feel like that's just the best move he's gonna have way too much mana if we don't deal with it so yeah i really would have loved to charming prince there uh, but I feel like this was just the right move. Yeah. And, and hmm. I mean, I guess I could have ripped apart. That might have been actually the smarter move. He's leaving it X. Oh, no, he's not. Okay. I was like, he's leaving it exiled, so it's just gone. But no. Um, he cannot play his commander this turn, so that's, that's pretty good. Next turn, he will be able to, unless we're able to maybe remove his Sculptor of Winter or Gilded Goose. Um, we can kind of stop the attack of the 1-1 and probably the 2-2 here with just our Skyclave Apparition. Uh, and he's also not going to swing with his 1-1, so yay. We were managed to not have to worry about it. Uh, I think we really need to be hitting our lands, so I'm going to use Thrill of Possibilities. Discarding um, Return Fast Caller, just because it is so expensive. Uh, and we might be able to get it. Um, we can't get it back with Reconstruct History, but it's fine. Hmm. Alright, Valakut Exploration isn't awful, but we do need to have a land for it to do anything. 
Um, honestly, I think this deck might be a little slow, uh, but I don't know. We, I guess, are stalling. Maybe, maybe I should have rip aparted. Honestly, I was kind of just hoping for a land uh, that wasn't entering the battlefield tapped, just so that then I could rip apart. But no, he'll get out his commander, which isn't like the worst. His commander is not one that I'm like super scared of. Oh, and if he does create a zero like or one one, I can kill him. If he decides to boost up his creature, uh, then it will be slightly trickier. Um, yeah. Yeah, so he's going to boost it up, which is really unfortunate with us having Rip Apart. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use Charming Prince to flicker Skyclave Evaporation. Uh, I think that's the play here. Right? Hmm. Yeah, I think we Charming Prince. And then we, uh, we flicker this. Uh, so we'll get that back, and then I think we want to take this and see if we can just kind of take down the amount of mana he has. Yeah, and then we get this back. We can then exile his commander. That that was a pretty good so turn. Good. We were able to kind of take his board and get it under control. Um, we're also kind of putting stuff in our graveyard. We have an instant. We have a sorcery. Oh, so this reconstruct history is getting better and better. We also have Hofri Ghost Forge which uh, it will be pretty awesome if we can get it out, especially with uh, Skyclave Apparition already being a spirit. It can already get that boost, and then if it does die, we can create a copy and then remove more, assuming he plays something else. We've almost taken his commander out of the game. I mean, it's it's eight mana. He has access to, I guess, seven if he creates a food. So, I, I mean, his commander can come back, but we should be able to keep removing it. There we go. Um, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, but I do, he's holding up mana, and I'm not really feeling pressured to hoe free at this point, so I think what we might do is Valakut Exploration, and then do the Fury Calm Snarl, um, which then will trigger this, and then we can see if we get something. Okay, so he's gonna destroy that. Alright, that's unfortunate, but we do still get this trigger. Uh, so we will be able to cast Annex, and then we're going to play Lorehold Excavation, which I think is a wonderful card. Um, it will allow us to start filling our graveyard for our Reconstruct History, and then we can maybe exile stuff to give me spirits. Yep, that's completely fine with that. Alright. It'll also uh, kind of start a clock for our opponent. So turn Timber Symbiosis is kind of scary, but I don't know what big things he might have. Uh, Lanoir Visionary, yeah, that's kind of annoying, um, but I'm not necessarily too worried about it. Especially, does this do anything that I would really care about? Hmm. Um, I think we're gonna play Hofri. Are, are we? Are we gonna do Leyline Tyrant? Are we gonna? What is the play here? I think we hope free. And then if either of our things die, I think we're going to send Skyclave Apparition in. And then that should just guarantee get a block. Um, and then we leave Charming Prince open for defense. If he swings with Lanoir Visionary, we block with Charming Prince. If he dies, comes back, flickers our Skyclave Apparition, which then... We'll get rid of his Lanowar Visionary, so he pretty much needs to remove Hofri here to keep his Lanowar Visionary alive, or just not attack, which, either way, that is pretty good for us. Um, then we get to Mill. It is a non-land. <sighs> Kazool's Fury is pretty good. Uh, if we draw a land, I, I am considering reconstructing history to go get this, so that we can sacrifice stuff, then get the Hofri triggers. Um... So yeah, that's what I'm considering, but he is going to destroy all creatures and then get to return something, which is unfortunate. Uh, luckily, anything he could return, we can deal with Lorehold Command. Um, oh, and we get our stuff back. Oh my gosh, I completely forgot that Hofri was like protection for this. Um, so flickering, it's not going to be good. We're going to scry two. Uh, if we do this, we can re-get out Hofri, so I will keep the land on top. Interesting. That did not seem like a good move for him at all. 
because now I just get whole free back and my board is exactly the same if not better than last time um, yeah that that board wipe just seemed tragic for him uh, and then we can lower hold command if we want we could so he's gonna destroy Hofri probably yeah uh, yeah we'll move him to the command zone I really don't see us casting him again but I don't know how necessary that will be we do have of course low hold excavation um, yeah Hmm. If only we had one more land. I think we're gonna lore hold command here. We're gonna do choose this mode, and then we're gonna choose probably this one. So we're gonna we're gonna kill his elvish war master just because I don't I don't think we can let him keep that. Okay. Cool. Uh, I will swing with this guy. I, I really don't want him getting the Land of War Visionary back. I forgot. Oh my god, I'm dumb. I forgot he has Indestructible. That's dumb. Yeah, that, that was like a major misplay. Whatever. <sighs> For some reason, I was like, oh yeah, he has Hexproof, not Indestructible. It's fine. Um, Reconstruct History. Oh wow, he's really going for his Tyvar. The true measure of the hero is the <laughs> There's enough glory for all of us. Huh. We're going to reconstruct history. What? What? Am I being dumb? What do you... Oh, I don't have an artifact card. Okay. Oh, there we go. I'm like, I'm being dumb here. Um, probably lore hold command. Probably rip apart. No planeswalker. There we go. Um, this will let us be mean to his um, Tyvar once again. Killing it. We took too many risks. So, yeah. I feel, I feel like that was really good. We get our lower hold command back. We get Balakut Exploration. Um, I, I, I'd i be willing to sacrifice the 2-2 two -two for his 2-2 two -two or for both his 1-1s. One -ones. I feel like that would be worth it. Let's see, though. Especially because, yeah, that's what I figured was going to happen. He'll get a 2-2 two -two, or a 3-3, three -three, whatever. I'm not super concerned about it. At the moment, we are sitting pretty high on life total. Um, on our life total. Ooh, that's a little concerning. Uh, let's hope he doesn't have a land. I could maybe see him searching for land. That is really concerning. He can get the perfect card right here. Um, but we'll have to see what that perfect card is. We have a lot of gas in our hand. Um, and Quake Bringer can, if we just bring the game to a stall, just win us pretty quick, win it pretty quickly. So, yep. We don't have any removal for anything too big at the moment. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I forgot that does three damage to him. He is playing with fire. Okay, so he is keeping the card in his hand. Um... All right, we're gonna play Terror of the Peaks. And then Annex from Exile. I'm expecting a removal spell. Nope, okay. We're able to get rid of his Scoot Swarm and let, and it's probably gonna be the Sack of Land get two. No, okay. I thought he was gonna try and make sure his Scoot Swarm stuck around. Uh, I'm trying to think what cards he could have here that would be super devastating. He's gonna block with the 3-3. Three, three. Yep. Good with this. Let's hope we deal damage. Nope, we're getting life. Whatever. Um, I feel like 
Honestly, this game has kind of been really weird. Uh, we started off and I felt like we were just kind of hopeless and we've kind of turned things around. It's very different than a normal Boros deck where in a normal normal Boros deck, if you are not gaining a lot of advantage really early, you're going to lose. But obviously this one's built a, little, a lot higher on the CMC scale. Uh, so he got the Great Hen, which is a really weird choice because he needs another creature to have that happen. Of course, that will gain him two life per turn, but with Terror of the Peaks out... Um, and him losing a bunch of life. I don't see much he can do here. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, what do we want to do? We get a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, so we can... We can just win. Like... Yeah. Right? Well, if we did three to him, he'll go down to six, and then we'll get the boost. Never mind, never mind, never mind. We, we need to do this differently. Uh, three damage, this. So we, we deal three to him, we gain three, we get this up to six, um, and then swing. There you go. Yep. All right, so that was a victory in a quite long game. Um, generally, you don't see Boros decks trying to win in that sort of field. And we did kind of go against the deck that I wanted, which was one that was more mid-rangey. Of course, he started off fairly quickly. So, um, of course, that's important to remember. But yeah, we ended up doing pretty well there. We were able to stabilize once we were able to get his board under control. And then we just kept drawing gas, and uh, we really, Hofri may not have seemed like he did a lot that get match, but he did turn the, our enemy's blood into the, blood in the snow into something that probably turned the game around for us. Um, I don't know if he didn't know exactly what Hofri did, or thought it would end up working differently, I don't know. Either way, we're going up against a Magda deck, which can be a little bit concerning, but does require a little bit of setup time, so we can hopefully use that setup time. However, I would like both my colors. That would be kind of great. Um, and we do have Tipple to Trickery as a fun little include in the deck. Um, this hand is not great by any stretch of the imagination, but I just didn't feel like mulliganing down to five would have been very good. And we do have Secret Rendezvous, which... A little yikes. Claim the Firstborn, huh. Do we have anything we can do with that that's interesting? Other than hit him in the face. Not really. Ah, uh, Table Trigger is really bad against their deck because they're running lots of expensive stuff, so... Yeah. Um, if we draw a red land, I might claim the Firstborn into my own... Or like counter claim the Firstborn and hope to hit something. There we go. Yeah. We're gonna claim this. Oh, I forgot. I need to go in full control mode. Whoops. My bad. Oh, I do not play this card. Uh, well, that kind of ruined my plan, but we did get two damage in. Not nearly as worth it as I would have wanted. So. Um, not worth it. Like, I know I'm about to get hit for a ton, but... I, you know, there's just the chance of getting the double strike dragon is just too high. <laughs> Alright. Honestly, I think our best bet here is to cast Arcane Signet countering it. Uh, I don't love this. Let's see what we get. Probably nothing that amazing. Ideal like tutor. Okay. Um I mean I guess I get to go get something. What would be best in this situation? This is such a weird include. Why did I put this in here? Um Ha. Yeah, I have no idea. Let's just I just, I think we lost. Uh, yeah, no, we lost. Guaranteed. Alright, I'm just gonna concede, because he's gonna swing with three creatures, get his five treasures, get the double strike dragon win. 
Alright guys, so that is going to do it for this video. I know that was only two games and the second one was like one of the quickest games of Brawl I've ever played, but that was it. Uh, I think I showcased the deck pretty well. You get to see Boros be a little bit more long, long gamey and I think that's really awesome to see. So if you guys enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe to see more Brawl videos coming out later this week, and I will see you guys in the next one.